G'day Ziggy D here with another Path of Exile gearing guide. In this particular video I'm going to be covering shields and there's a lot to cover so I'm going to jump straight into it. Now the first thing to note is that despite there are this apparent size of shields, the maximum sockets they can have is three. So combined with the one-handed weapons that means you can get two sets of three linked slots uh, if you're a, you know, a one-hand and shield user. Uh, so that means unfortunately you can only get your six or five link on your chest piece and that's just kind of the trade-off you have to take. Now an additional trade-off is that, uh, you know, I guess in uh, balancing out the increased and fairly significantly increased defensive power that you get from shields, all shields have a reduced move speed, uh, you know, hidden implicit stat to them. Now this is 3% for all shields as a base, but however the tower shield gets 6% decreased move speed. So uh, that's something to consider if, you know, if you really need your mobility. Uh, you kind of have to make a decision between mobility and uh, move speed there. Oh, sorry, mobility and defensive power. So uh, now I'm just going to cover the, the individual shield types and their other implicit mods besides their uh, move speed reduction. So as I mentioned, the tower, speed, the tower shield gives uh, the 6% uh, reduced move speed. Now I just wanted to note that this can be uh, counteracted with the leather and steel nodes. There's two of those down by the duelist area, and if you get either one of those, then the reduced move speed on any of the shield types won't affect you anymore. So that's something worth noting. Uh, it used to be an armor master passive, but the armor master passive has been removed in a recent patch. So um, tower shields don't really have anything else to them, just very strong defensively, have a lot of armor. Uh, all bucklers, so if we go across to this shield here, only have the 3% reduced move speed, they don't have any other bonuses to them. Next up we have our spirit shields or pure energy shield. Uh, shield. <laughs> Uh, they have uh, the 3% reduced move speed, but they also give increased spell damage uh, in varying amounts. So this ranges from zero. Some of the one of the uh, types of spirit shields actually gives you no increased spell damage, uh, and then up to 15%. So the maximum one here you can see on this ivory spirit shield is that 15% increased spell damage. Uh, next up we have the round shield, which gives uh, a 3% reduction to move speed as per normal, uh, but they also give increased block recovery. Uh, again, some don't have any at all, so this ranges between 0 and 180%. As you can see here with the teak round shield, I've got a max of 180% increased block recovery there. Uh, the next one is the spiked shield, which is your evasion energy shield dual class sort of one there. Uh, in addition to its 3% reduced move speed, it also has thorns, and this increases as the shields increase in level, so obviously ranging from very little, it's like something like 2 damage, to somewhere up near 220 uh, damage returned, so that can be significant higher levels, but they they are a less popular shield all around. And then finally we have the kite shield, which in addition to its minus 3% move speed, it also has increased all elemental resistances, so that's obviously a very good stat to have in terms of defensive power. Uh, that ranges from 0% on one particular shield to a maximum of 24, which is pretty massive for increased all elemental resistances. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is that all shields have an implicit chance to block, and this ranges from 24 to 30%, however some uniques and things like that have uh, increased or lesser values. So now let's jump straight into the actual mods that you can roll on your shields. Uh, there's a few things that change depending on the type of shield you've got here, but I've tried to set this out in a way that will make, make a lot of sense, hopefully. So first up we have max life. And the maximum life roll I just want to mention for all shield types is 99. So if you're trying to determine whether you've got a shield with a good high max life and it's a higher level shield, if you're getting close to that 100 mark, uh, then you have got a fairly good roll there. Uh, next up you have max mana, but this is only avail available on the intelligence type shields. So that's the sp spirit shield here and the spike shield types here. Uh, both of those can get their max mana increased. Uh, next up you have local defensive stats, now this is the integer increase, uh, the percentage increase, and the percentage increase plus stun recovery. Pretty much standard to all armor types. Uh, next up you have thorns, and that's actually available on all shield types, not just the spiked ones. Uh, then you have spill, uh, spell damage on uh, only on pure energy shield shields here. So these can almost function like a focus or a weapon for spell casters, and they can in increase your uh, spell damage a lot. As you can see, I've got the 14% increased spell damage actual mod there in addition to the implicit mod. Uh, next up, you have plus uh, uh, skill gem level to fire, cold, and lightning gems. Now this, again, is only available on these pure energy shield shields here. They aren't available on the energy shield evasion, just these ones here, so the pure int cast shields. So if you're, you know, if you want a three link uh, with increased gem slots for those, then you can uh, you can put those in those shields, hopefully. 
Uh, next up, uh, plus to melee, must plus skill gem level to melee gems is available on every other shield, but the the spirit shields. So uh, any of the other types can get those plus to melee gems. Uh, now, in terms of suffixes, we have uh, additional intelligence, strength, or dexterity, and that depends on the type of shield. So armor obviously can only get strength, whereas combined ones like this intelligence. Uh, uh, dexterity one here can get intelligence or dexterity. So that depends on the base type of the shield there. Next up you can get any single resist and each one of those counts as a mod, so fire, lightning, cold and chaos. And then you can get all elemental resists as an as in a mod by itself as well. Uh, next up is life re regen, stun recovery, pretty standard. And then additional block chance up to 6%. So you can increase the base block, block chance of a shield uh, by a further 6%, so that means you can get 36% on this tower shield here. Uh, next up, we've got mana regen, and then spell critical chance, which are only, again, available on this spirit shield. So if you're a caster, a spirit shield, you know, if you're wielding a wand in, in the other hand, a spirit shield is a very good option, not just for the defensive stats, but also for offensive stats. You can do a lot to increase the power of your spells through the spirit shields there. Uh, overall, in determining whether you have a good shield or not, is just about uh, finding those right stats. So getting the high defensive stats, getting a lot of resists if you're going for a resist shield, or even if you're just going for another type of shield, you can get a combination of single resists and all resists. So you get some chaos and then some all resist, uh, and getting you know your max life and then your increased stats. Because shields are actually a fairly significant source of uh, your main defensive stat, like armor on the tower shields, getting a high percent, like 100% increased armor, uh, you know, that adds an extra five to 600 armor on your shield uh, to your overall armor class, which can be a nice increase there. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.